Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. You know, needled evergreens start looking off color about this time of the year, and usually from spider mites. In our first segment, we're going to tell you what to look for and how to save your landscape plants. This week, we received a text from two friends of Bloomers in the Garden Radio asking us to identify a tall purple spike plant blooming right now. They are one of Len's favorites. Stay tuned for our second segment, and we'll reveal what this easy-to-grow beauty is. We always talk about pollinator gardens and butterfly gardens, which focuses on the flowers. But Centerton Nursery thought this through and developed a line of plants to feed the caterpillars called Caterpillar Candy. It's baby food for butterflies. We'll tell you all about it in our third segment. Lots of hydrangea questions coming through the nursery this week. We'll give you a summertime hydrangea 101 in our fourth segment. Finally, in this week, what's bugging you? <laughs> Talking about tent caterpillars. They make those giant webs and trees and have hundreds of furry caterpillars that eat the leaves off your tree. We'll tell you what you can do to repel the hungry horde in our last segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 609- 685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Have you ever dealt with dead areas in your lawn that pull up like carpet? You most likely are the victim of the Japanese beetle larva eating your roots of your turf. Grubs sever the roots from the crown of the grass plant, causing the turf from being unable to take in water. It leaves you with a dead carpet of grass. Fertilum is a solution to stop those pesky grubs from destroying your lawn. High Yield Grub Free Zone is a season-long grub control that protects your grass from the damage caused by grubs, mole crickets, larvae of the European crane fly, green june beetles, bill bugs, and many more subsurface insects. So if you use VPG High Yield Grub Free Zone and protect your lawn, it's an easy-to-use product and does all the work. Simply spread it and water it in. It's that easy. Your lawn will be protected from grubs and dozens of other lawn feeding insects. Use the product the professionals use, High Yield Grub Free Zone. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's High Yield Grub Free Zone and expect to have the best looking lawn in the neighborhood. Neighbors Garden Center, Main Street, Hellertown, PA. Rhodes Garden, Delcab Pike, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Rourke Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider. Or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, oh. spider mites. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they do brother. major damage every year yeah. on evergreens mostly, like Alberta spruce and such. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they're, they're awful because they breed, like, so fast. Like, there can be 20 generations in a year. Wow. Like spotted <laughs> lanternfly, we talk about it all the time, yeah. one, generation one generation a year. Yeah. The spider mites, 20. 20. 20. 20. So... Here, here's Small, first. but a lot of generations. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can have one per needle of your plant. So, But the, the issue is, is knowing that you have it. First of all, when you look at your plant, 
and mostly again evergreens but it does affect different types of even vegetables and things like that where it has a it makes the plant look like it's losing its luster <laughs> that's right wouldn't you say oh yeah you know, where you look at it, it just looks it looks colors Something off or looks off, at yeah. yellow or, or there's a section that's yellow. Yeah. You also look for like small little web pockets. Like it looks like that there's a, like a tiny little spider there. And it, yeah, yeah. And it would be because yeah. actually I, when I was doing the segment, I was thinking, oh, this is a thing that make people, makes people mad, but it makes you uh -huh. sound smart. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mites are not insects, but are related to the tick and spider family. <laughs> still a bug and They're it eats stuff. Bug. It's, not, <laughs> it's right. a bad bug. Uh -huh. <laughs> So what you need to do is you need to get rid of it. And being that there's 20 generations, you're not going to be able to spray and get reliable, I guess, reliable cleanup of the insect because there's so many different stages. So you have the adult, you have eggs, you have the immatures, you have, and they're all at these different stages. You go and you put a contact spray in and it kills maybe, you know, one generation but there's still a bunch of others still behind that are that are can still do damage. So what we recommend first of all is to do both a contact spray. If you if you have them. You know, wait, before I get ahead of myself. Julio, what is the best method to see if you have spider mites? Is to look at the uh, leaf you're under underneath leaves, right? Well, no. Sorry, Julio. I I, I threw that one. It was a fastball. You take a white piece of paper. Oh, yeah, and then you bang it, bang it, bang it, and then see if they fall on the top of the paper. Right, so you bang the piece dark. of paper, yeah. and what you'll do is, because they're, they're too small for the naked yeah, eye. I mean, you can, right. and they look like little specks of dust running all around. Oh, yeah, they're tiny, tiny. Then you know it. that you have them. And again, really tiny, really tiny. So once you establish that you do have them, you're going to want to use a contact spray, like we always talk about, Bonites 8 or... Spinosad, which is Captain Jack's, um, an old, old insecticide. Well, do you remember orthene? Yeah, I heard of that. That's an old, they don't call it orthene anymore. But uh, it's the same active ingredient that's in the Bonite Systemic yeah. Insect Control Concentrate. And that is a systemic that makes it poisonous to the insect. So then you're going to get that multiple generation control. So you want to do both a contact spray and a systemic spray. And you can also use imidacloprid. Mm -hmm. Again, it, you can just use granules, a systemic granule, and put it on the soil and it'll be absorbed through the plant. It takes a little bit too long for summertime use, but if you just do it in the spring, hence why does Len like that product from VPG that has the azalea food and imidacloprid because you're putting it down in the spring and you're gonna have clean plants throughout the, the rest of the season. That's a great one. So look for those small webs. Look, if, you're, if your plant just doesn't look healthy, like looks like something's going on, it's more than likely spider mites. Yeah, like you said, it loses its sheen, its luster. Yeah, it yeah. just, it, it's it looks sick. Yeah. It looks sick. You know, you get pale. Yeah. Your plant will too. <laughs> and if you wait long enough, it'll get brown. Yeah. <laughs> Not like me. And it'll, it'll completely lose its needles. And then you'll say, what did yeah. happen? Yeah, especially on the, uh, uh, the Alberta spruces. Right. Norway spruces. Yeah. Really all spruces, all spruces in particular. Yeah. Um, but needles. also junipers, mm -hmm. any, any of the evergreen families, it's going to control. But going back to it also will go on cucumbers, cucumbers. and squash. Oh, and yeah. you'll get it on other plants as well. Yeah, they're relentless. And they are, and and again, twenty. If they're doing twenty gener generations in a year, uh -huh. and yeah. what happens? The mites they only live for about thirty days, it's quick. but when it's hot, they're active. They're active. Yeah, boom. It's a nice way they of see saying leaves. that. They see leaves too. <laughs> that, that when when it gets hot, you're, uh -huh. it's going to be more prevalent because there's yeah. generations are going to be overlapping. Yeah. So, so be, be careful with that. Yeah, and be if you have it on vegetables. Okay, if you have it on vegetables, you can only use Captain Jack's or a. You cannot use a systemic. Is that understood? Say that one more time. If it is on edible crops like vegetables or herbs, you can only spray. And I would go with Captain Jack's, which is spinosad, because that is an organic, and that it will control them. But you're going to have to use it probably, you know, once a week because you've got to clean up the generations. You can't just do it once and think that you're done. You cannot use a systemic on edibles. Did I make that clear, Julio? Clear as daylight. Yeah, all right. So 
All right. If you've got any problems with insects of your own that you can't figure out, call the hotline at 609-685-1880, and we'll be glad to help you out. Remember, you can always text us pictures, too, but we like it when people call. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we like hearing yeah, we your like voice. That better, yeah. We like that better, yeah. We want to talk to you, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant paired with the perfect container can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, Ed, you know, I was blown away this week because uh, we got not only one, we got two requests that's right. <laughs> to identify the same plant. Now, that's, that's right. really unusual. That's right. Shout out Dr. Jim. Yes, Dr. Jim. <laughs> the common name is called loose strife, but better known as lithrum. That's right. Lithrum. I love lithrum. Yeah. You said in the, in the show that, that it was our my favorite flower. It is. Easy to grow. You know, <laughs> nothing I like better than something I plant and it's there and it keeps coming back, coming back. back. <laughs> you had mentioned we have one planted at Bloomers at the store, at the store and yeah. you said you have always seen it there since I started. Yeah, since you started, since started. that's a long time. I know. That's a long time. <laughs> that it's what more can you ask for? Plant a plant, comes back every year, reliable perennial, yeah. blooms beautifully, no insect pests to speak of. Nothing. And it, great cut flower. Oh, it's wonderful. The, I mean, I had it planted at my home along an area with my perennials. 
And it was a filler for cut flowers all the time. I could take a bunch of that and just bring it in, and it was beautiful. It's like a, stup, a spiky type flower. Uh, to me, it's a great plant. But then there are those, I think it's the same people that want us to wear masks again. <laughs> yep. the, yeah, to tell, it. Let's, talk, let's talk about the dark side of lithrum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Brian. <brother>. So... <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, lithrum is called an invasive plant by the uh, invasive plant police. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it grows well in every soil, you know, it takes full sun, will grow in the wet areas. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Right. I won't say anything about masks yeah, either. No. <laughs> All right. Keep going, Uli. Yeah. They're, it's an invasive. It's an invasive plant. You know why? Uh, we, we, you know, we understand what's going on, but. Um, Not that we like it. No, that we don't. <laughs> But, you know, it performs really well. I mean, you know, and uh, I love it. I love it. I love to see I, it all the time. But but here you go. Why is it, a, why is it an invasive? Why do they consider it invasive? Oh, because it has, you know, well, they say they ha it has 500,000 seeds in one plant. And it, so it'll scatter all over the place. And that's a problem? No. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'll get off of those invasive species peaceable. Because they're the same ones that tell you that uh, butterfly bush is invasive. And they're the ones that tell you Norway, Norway maples are <laughs> invasive. Oh. And on and on and, and on. on and on. And and it comes back because they say that it's taking over areas where there was native native species. You know, come on. It's survival of the fittest. And lithrum is a beautiful plant and it's it's taken over. It's taken over and probably an ugly plant. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But not that I have an opinion. <laughs> so, all right, look. it's a good opinion. All right, so so again, this beautiful plant. So what do they do? The scientists, right? All right, the science. All Julian, science. I'm talking about, about how horticulture is science, mm -hmm. as science, science. It is not just a bunch of landscape guys that are like, you know, let's put this in. So they have developed a sterile variety of lithrum, okay, and it's called Morden's Morden's Gleam. Okay, make sure you get that right. It's Morden's Gleam, and it means that it does not produce seed. Now, why is that a benefit? Okay, if it doesn't produce seed, then that way it's not going to be an invasive, and that you still have a really nice plant. Now, the only, well, again, I'm the retailer, right? I, I, I am a retail nursery. That means that it has to be propagated more than likely through cutting, which means that it's going to be more expensive. So, all right, that's my problem. Not everybody out there in Radio Land, that's not your problem, but that's my problem. But New Jersey is still allowed. Pennsylvania is it still le is it is it okay in Pennsylvania? I don't yeah, know. so it's yeah, not. It I haven't is. seen it on. I haven't seen it. Like I know that Maryland is. I think Maryland. It's not. You know, they. It's on an invasive list. It's. Yeah. I don't know if you can sell it in Maryland. I know that a lot of Midwest, like Minnesota, Minnesota. the liberal. Hey, all right, I'll get off. Of <laughs> Minnesota, they can't do it, and yeah. they can't sell in Minnesota. But you know what? Why? Because they say it takes over the prairies. Oh, okay. Must be pretty. Okay. Anyway, um, but if you want a good summertime flowering plant, grows probably about three foot tall, so, so you'd keep it in the back of the border, like where ours is planted at Bloomers. It's a chain link fence. It is. You don't see any chain link fence when that's planted in front of it. All you see is the lithium blooming. Yeah, you can't miss it. And it's just a great, great plant. Oh yeah, yeah. But we've gone through this before. Butterfly bush, right? That is is they barberry have made sterile. Which what is it? Barberry. Barberry. Yeah, like crimson I mean, big me barberry. Now, but there's they the science has created varieties that are sterile, so that that you can still grow a similar plant. It gets another name. Somebody gets a royalty. You know, and it, it costs a little more, but it, it protects the native species. Oh, yeah. You listen to Maria? Maria's our, Maria at Bloomers is our native species. She 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 loves natives, so. I mean, you know, you understand what the plant does, right? Yeah. If, if it does little, everything. Yeah. Everything you want in a plant. Yeah, you know the habit of it. You know how it you know, grows. So what's, you know, I don't see a big deal about that. I, it's aggressive, maybe? Well, I don't know. I, I think what it is is that... It spreads so prolifically that yeah. it, wants to, it wants to. But like you said, in, in our section at Bloomers, where we have it, we do not have the sterile variety. It, it's right. And, it, and that there's there's primarily been only a couple 
on the market. I think Robert is one, and and then there was Morden's Pink, where that's where they get Morden's Gleam from. But but I don't it, see that plant going all over. No, like anywhere else, but us. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's in that same place. Same it's place. not like it it, it it's seeded below. itself and is now like a ground cover of litter next door. Or, no, yeah, no. So yeah. again, it is it is. A common name, you'll see it, it under loose stripe. Mm-hmm. We sell it. I mean, it's a we beautiful do. plant. We I do. Mean, and we've and never had anybody say, oh, it took over my garden. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> More than the reverse. It's like, wow, it keeps growing great. Yeah, it comes it back year after year. Yeah. It is uh, as foolproof a perennial as I know of, but you've got to be patient for it. It's not going to be one of those that you see in the spring. No. Immediately, it's the summertime. It's June, around June. Yeah, yeah. Start, starts around June. Yeah. And you got to be careful that you don't weed it by yeah. accident. By accident, yeah. No insect pests bother it. No. Does Like, you know how some plants you get powdery mildew, like phlox, for instance. Phlox, right. you phlox. know you're going to get powdery yeah. mildew. Yeah. They have resistant varieties, but you still get it. You still get it. Yeah. I don't know. And then you cut it back when, Len? Uh, in the fall. In the fall. About yeah. six inches. Because that was the other question. Who is it you yeah. talked to? Burn, yeah, burn. Burn. Burn, yep. Hey. Shout out. Shout out to Burn. He, oh, what a great gardener he is. He, yeah. loves, he loves plants. Yeah. yeah. Loves plants. In that, where he was asking, what is it and when do you cut it back? Yeah, when do you cut it back? And again, it, you, it's the color is not like a pure pink. Yeah. It's more of like a cross between like pink and a purple. It's yeah. like not even lavender. It's ma- not even magenta. Yeah. It, it's, a unique, it's a unique color. It is unique. You can't miss it. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. It is. Yeah. Great plant. Oh, yeah. And we're talking about lithrum. Lithrum, yeah. You wanted Lens favorite. It, yes, it is. And you and you want to to again be the good social conscious individual and see if the sterile variety of Morden's Glen M O M O rather, I'm sorry. Can't read my own writing. Gleam G L E A M. Right, if that's available. And if not, just get the other one. Yeah. Right. You come to Bloomers and we have them. Yeah. We'll have them, you know, well, we ran out, so. <laughs> yeah, we're getting more in. We're getting more in. So, but again, great perennial. Great perennial. I think we made that clear it's a great perennial. Yes, it is. Yeah. I think we have. I think we have. Uh, the upsides are are much greater, greater. than the downside. But uh, for those of you that, again, are socially conscious for not wanting to have an invasive species, I do understand it. I do understand it. God, it's a beautiful plant. (laughs) All right. (laughs) On that note, we're going to break. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Have you ever dealt with dead areas in your lawn that pull up like carpet? You most likely are the victim of the Japanese beetle larva eating your roots of your turf. Grubs sever the roots from the crown of the grass plant, causing the turf from being unable to take in water. It leaves you with a dead carpet of grass. Fertilum is a solution to stop those pesky grubs from destroying your lawn. High Yield Grub Free Zone is a season-long grub control that protects your grass from the damage caused by grubs, mole crickets, larva of the European crane fly, green june beetles, bill bugs, and many more subsurface insects. So if you use VPG High Yield Grub Free Zone and protect your lawn, it's an easy-to-use product and does all the work. Simply spread it and water it in. It's that easy. Your lawn will be protected from grubs and dozens of other lawn feeding insects. Use the product that professionals use, High Yield Grub Free Zone. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's High Yield Grub Free Zone and expect to have the best looking lawn in the neighborhood. Green Acres Nursery and Garden Center, West County Line Road, Colmar, Pennsylvania. Herbins Garden Center, Chestnut Street, Emmis, Pennsylvania. Laurel Oak Garden Center, Thompson Mill Road, Marlton, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. 
Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, well, you know our bird seed. I don't uh-huh. even know if you know this, but right. that the new crop is in. Oh, it is. We're clearing out of what we have. Okay. That they're buy one get one free right now. Wow. Uh, Bloomers blend. Yeah, because we just need to we need to make room, room for the new one. We're just gonna blow it out. So. Oh, that's great. You want any? Okay. No. Thank you. Anyway, um, it is a better seed, by the way. It is. Uh, oh, but wow. what we're here to talk about is something different. Yeah, okay, totally. Look, most pollinator gardens are all about the butterflies. It's all about the flowers and, and, and everything else, which which is which is appropriate. It is. But those butterflies, when they're hanging around those plants, they're not just necessarily looking to feed. They're looking for a place to lay eggs. So centered in nursery, kudos to them. The blue family, genius. Yep. Genius. They are. And here's why. They have created a group of plants to attract and feed the caterpillars that start off as the eggs that the butterflies are laying so that they have something to eat. It's like, think of it this way. It's like creating a little garden just for the caterpillars to eat. And it's like a little nursery to raise your your cat, your caterpillars. So then they come in, go out and become butterflies. I mean, to me, it, it's, it's a fantastic idea. Now... You know, originally, right, mm-hmm. like a weed, the description of a weed is any plant in the wrong spot. It could be a tree. Yeah. It's in the wrong spot. It's a weed. It's got to come out. And I just think like, all right, insect pests, like any bug feeding on an ornamental plant is an insect pest. You know, <laughs> it needs to go. <laughs> so it's doing damage. But with centered and it's turned it completely around. And the name of this is called Caterpillar Candy. Wow. I mean, great great name. About, I mean, how? Kids gardening? If you have kids, oh, if you have goodness. kids, you need to get this. I mean, mm-hmm. if you get these plants, you'll be able to teach science. You'll be able to, of course, plant material. But all the way down to watching a butterfly egg hatch, become a caterpillar, and right. then... Go and, and go in its chrysalis yeah, form, the and then come out. Yeah. I mean, and it's what not just one plant, and 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 they're very smart the way that they did this, mm-hmm. the way they did. It. So, the for them in a second, but the plants are labeled not only by what they are, but what butterflies they attract. So, like swallowtails will be attracted by a certain type, monarchs by another type, and that each each one is listed that way specific specifically wow that's specifically. awesome specifically mm-hmm. um i'll tell you we we all create a vegetable garden for ourselves now it's time to play <laughs> real really if i would if i do uh-huh. a pollinator garden right uh-huh. right i would have this either under planted uh-huh. in the pollinator garden because again the, those butterflies are flying around looking for a place to start the, the next generation yes i don't know that's great. So, okay, let's talk about the plant specifically. Mm-hmm. We've been selling dill for years to be used as an herb, but also more and more, I, I think we sell just as much to be used to attract black swallowtail butterflies. I mean, 
without without having it called caterpillar candy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. But people don't know. Right. I mean, it's hard enough to get people yeah, to understand don't. plants right. to now, like they've got to understand butterflies and what they eat mm-hmm. and everything sure. else. Now, there's also, I want to go down to, to one of my favorites, uh-huh. and I never understood why nobody grew Queen's Anne's Lace. Now, <laughs> yeah, it right. is considered somewhat of a weed, mm-hmm. but that's the one that has the big white flowers that are like, you know, three inches across, round, and that, you know why they call it Queen's Anne's Lace? In the center of the flower, there's a little black spot. Right. And that's the queen, and then the lace is like that collar, the, oh, like okay. the olden times that you know they wear that you think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's what, that? that's what that's that that's where it got that name. Oh, thank you. But cool. it's available as a starter plant. So if you have a cut flower garden, mm-hmm. there you, you go. know right these there. plants you're not growing for the flower, you're growing them because it's the food. food. They're food. I mean, granted, you let them flower, but. Right. But you're really growing it for the, for the food, food for the yeah, butterflies, because the but for for the caterpillars, because the caterpillars, for instance, on Queen Anne's lace, mm-hmm. that that's going to also be a swallowtail. Now, oh, actual, yeah. the, the problem it's a biannual, but so is foxglove. Yeah. You know how many foxglove are sold each year? Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, I, I I don't know. I'm up on the cut flower thing because I've got a cut flower garden this year, yeah, and there's I, I'm missing some white. Oh, yeah. I could that's use some white. white. And there you go. And there it is. There it is right there. There it is. Yeah. Also, if you go to like just simple things like parsley, mm-hmm. another swallowtail will like will like parsley, um, and again monarchs, monarchs, right? Yeah, monarchs are going to go after all the milkweed. Milkweeds, yeah. And milkweed is poisonous to other insects. Yeah. Got that sap, right? Right. And so when they eat that, that birds know to avoid them. So <laughs> what they fill up on that stuff, so it becomes where You'll, you'll see why the, the monarchs are so prolific is that they aren't really eaten by birds because of that, because they know that either they'll get sick or, or poison. What a great way to... Yeah. That's great. I watch the Discovery Channel. <laughs> there you go. Good way. Anyway. Also, rue is another, that's a giant swallowtail. And swallowtails are either yellow or black, by the way. Um, those pretty yellow ones that you see. And there's simple things like, like there's clover, White, white clover. clover. I mean, white clover is just a, a, a white clover. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm getting at. It's a white clover. Uh-huh. You can plant in your garden, right. and you can plant red clover as well yeah, the red one's pretty as good. as a cover crop. Yeah, awesome. So if your garden's getting a little thin, you don't feel like plant replanting in the fall. Put the cover crop in. Oh, there. there you go. Yeah. There you go, uh, and you're you're creating a little butterfly garden. What else have you got on your list, Julio? What surprised uh, you? You know, ironweed is just Ver- Vernonia is pretty cool. That's for the American uh, lady. Yeah, it's a it's a native. It's a native. Another native. <laughs> Another native. Folks. So we're trying to redeem ourselves. That's right, we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a U.S. native perennial of deep green thread. It's thread-like leaves, top right. of the purple flowers in late summer. That's a good one. Right, and I'm just trying to count up here. We have one, two, three, right. four, five, six. Seven, eight, eight different butterflies at least mm. that are attracted to the plants that are in this series, and they're and they're not big. They're not going to yeah. spend a lot. They're like four inch pots. You probably pay, yeah. spend like six, seven dollars. It and that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the thing is, is that it they'll last, and most of them are perennial. Yes. Like I know my, my parsley is perennial. I got my parsley to come back. Um, again, it's it's a great idea. It's perfect for kids, but you have to remember. And our segment that's coming up at the end, that's the not so nice caterpillars. You want to make sure that you're not spraying in this section and you're not having any overspray because you're going to hurt the caterpillars that you're trying to feed. So you just got to be careful with pesticides. Got anything, Dad? Who? Boy, I tell you, I'm excited because we're going to get them soon. Yeah. Right? No, like, they're coming in today. Today. Look at that. They're coming that in is, today. That is real soon. And so. then we talked about when our trip to Ohio, that this right. was the, the coolest thing that we saw that we out saw. of the entire that, visit. That's right. Yeah. It's and just, again, it's uh, called Caterpillar Candy. Yeah. It's by Center to Nursery. Yeah. And it's just a tremendous yeah. opportunity to learn. It, it also, it completes the circle. So you, so you have where the eggs are laid, 
the caterpillars feed, feed it, they, they yeah. go into their chrysalid, they come back out as a butterfly, mm -hmm. and the whole cycle starts all over, over again. again. Yeah. And so, you know, it's the Lion King song. It's the circle of life. You know, I can't sing. But anyway, <laughs> I didn't you you understand sing. it. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I can't. No, I can't. All right, so we'll be right back in the garden. Oh, by the way, we have a list of different plants that we can send you if you give us a call on the hotline, 609-685-1880, right. we will send you the list that they have from Caterpillar Candy that shows what plants, what what. Uh, what butterflies, butterflies. And, yeah. and caterpillars it will attract. So just That's contact awesome. us on the hotline and we'll make sure you, we get you one. All right, All right. we'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609 685 one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, Ed, I think it's time for another hydrangea lesson, huh? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, lots yeah. of questions this week. Lots, lots of, of questions. Yeah, yes, we've had plenty of them, and... Um, because there's so many hydrangeas are blooming right now. Right. You have cross species that are blooming. So let's let's start first by by macrophylla. Those are the ones that are called snowballs that are either pink or blue. Right. Mop heads. But again, right. right. There. But they're also there's also white ones. Yes. As well, whites you're not going to change the color yeah. with, but on the blue and the pink, 
you can adjust that color based on their pH. Acidic makes them blue. Alkaline makes them pink. All right. The varieties that are paniculata types, which are the more triangular head, and you see they're probably starting now. You, oh, they're always hydrangea trees as well, and that they're the ones that are white, and they fade to like a pink, most of them. Limelight, little lime, uh, those are those are the ones that are most of that. They do not change, no matter what the pH is. You can't change, change them others. to pink or blue. Yeah. But the first fry, the mop heads, right? Macrophila. Macrophila. Uh, those types you can adjust. And and here's the deal: most people will go, "Oh, great! I'll put aluminum sulfate and I'll make it really blue, and then I won't have to fertilize." <laughs> no, you still have to fertilize. Think of when you're adjusting the pH, you're, you're putting a mineral basically, in, or all right, we're not going to get too technical. You're basically putting something in the soil that's going to adjust the pH, and that's all it's doing. The nutrient value you really need to get from a well-balanced fertilizer. Our favorite for acid is going to be Hollytone. When you prefer, when you prefer a blue hydrangea, you're going to use aluminum sulfate just to adjust the pH and and not one or the other, you're gonna use both mm -hmm. Hollytone. And that will give your plants a broad feeding, but also keep them on the blue side. If you want them pink, you're gonna use plant tone. Okay, that's more of a neutral pH. And you're gonna use either lime or magical, and that's gonna help them to be pink. You're gonna have issues. If you have a blue hydrangea that you planted and you're trying to force it to be pink, it's probably going to look purpley pink, blue. <laughs> if, if you want a pink one, plant a pink one. If you want a blue one, plant a blue one and still follow these same things. They, each one of those additional supplements will help it to be that much bluer or that much pinker. Try not to change if, changing it like uh, endless summer, for instance, they they can somewhat get pinkish, but I think they're prettier blue, and they're better pink varieties. Right. All right, and that's again macrophylla types. Macrophylla are the ones, snowball bush, the round ones that that Big leaf, start yeah. blooming in late spring and summer. That's what we're talking about. All right, what is the hydrangea flop? <laughs> Is that from the Olympics or what? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a five. Yeah. <laughs> what is a hydrangea flop? Well, it's when you know your hydrangeas are uh, are flopping on whoop, they're flopping on the ground, and uh, they're hitting the ground, and they look kind of floppy. The flowers. <laughs> yeah, the flopper. Yeah, the flopping the, flowers. The flopping flowers. That's right. The flopping flowers are from. <laughs> say that ten times fast. Yeah, ten, are because the, as they grow and they get bigger and then it rains on them, rains the on weight it, yeah, of the weight. flower is just drawn to the mm -hmm. ground right. and that it kind of forces the plant to grow that way. Right. So but what I, you're going to have to do is do some pruning. Yeah, but I know as they, as they mature, they, the stems will get stronger. You know, yeah, sort, I, not, a, no. Huh? no. If they're on the ground, they're not, they're, no, they're not going to magically bend back up. I'm talking about the second and third year, they, they'll get a little yes, stiffer. Yes, yes, yes. So young, yeah. but, but it still happens with, with older bit, plants. Yeah. And, and here's our point. What you're going to go and do is you're going to clean up the ones that are touching the ground because they're going to start to get yellow first. Trim them off. But you have to decide, all right, does my hydrangea bloom once really, really good? Like the one I have, which is my favorite, the Nico Blue. Yeah. Or is it the reblooming type, which it seems like every single one now is a bl ever blooming type, which yeah. is a repeat bloomer like Endless Summer, like you, know, you pick one. And... It blooms on its old wood and its new wood. What are we talking about, wood? <laughs> I, I'm sick of explaining that. Julio, you do it. The old wood is from last year's, you know, from the... It's new, a, new, oh, the new uh, wood. Old wood. Old wood is from last year. Yeah, old wood's from last year, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the new wood's from this year. Right. So when you stop pruning your hydrangea, hopefully, don't prune your hydrangeas unless they need it. Yeah. <laughs> so... It's going to grow and bud off of the old wood from, so like, let's say it's next year's, next spring. It's 20, 2022. We made it. We don't have to wear masks anymore. No. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Well, it is an election year, so we probably won't be. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different show. Yeah, it is. Um, anyway, that where the where where the fact that 2022 that if you didn't prune your plant since 2021, that would be old wood. Yep. And so it came out and did its spring thing, bloomed, and that either the blooms got taken off or it started new growth, its second spurt of new growth, and then that new growth will sprout a flower. That's what repeat bloomers do, and that's what was so magical about the scientists creating this variety. They re-bloomed, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Armitage said it best. We, we we thought we'd have yeah. a you know a, a, we'd fill the show with him talking about hydrangeas <laughs> right yeah. hydrangea bloom yeah. you bloom it you trim it you trim it after it flowers and that's it, that's it. drop gone. the mic he left yeah. you know? <laughs> so that's yeah. really what you should do yeah. is just trim it immediately when it's done flowering right. and then go ahead and and again that flop just clean up the clean just up, clean yeah. it up so it's not laying on the ground yeah. they don't look that pretty and you can't look into it yeah. plants always look better when you look into the flowers not alongside of the flower so. And it will make your plants, like Hula, you just said a little bit ago, it will make your plants stronger oh, the next yes. year. Yeah, it will be, yeah. Some of our growers that are trying to force blooms, you can yeah. tell that, that it's spindly growth. Sure. And they come up. Yes, they're budded. You're getting uh -huh. them. They're, oh, look at the buds. But then the stems are too weak to hold hold, on to hold them. And then Bloomers doesn't buy anything from them the next year because, <laughs> they're, <laughs> because their hydrangeas stunk. Yeah, but uh, anyway, yeah. that you want to, to take that over yourself. Now, the paniculata types, which are the triangular mm -hmm. flower, hey, you don't have to prune them now. You yeah, can't, you can if they leave. have that flop, you can, but you should keep yeah. them and not worry about them until late winter, yeah. early, early spring, because early yeah. spring, they do bloom on new yeah, wood. They do, yeah. So the white ones, most you really don't have to worry about. And the best thing mm -hmm. is not do anything. Yeah, it's the best thing, yeah. No matter what hydrangea it is. If you yep. just let it go, yep. you can almost be guaranteed. Because mm -hmm. we got it right just recently. My, my hydrangea's not blooming. Yeah. And it's, it's because they they sheared it in the spring. Don't shoot, let your shoot, landscapers yeah. touch them. Yeah. Landscapers like they're trying to fill in time, so they start shearing everything in everything. sight in uh, in the fall. Yeah. And what they're doing is they're cutting off your azalea flowers. Yeah. They're cutting off your hydrangea flowers. You're, you're wondering, it's like I can't grow anything. And where it's the guys who are supposed to know, screwed up. Oh, no. Yep, they messed up. Yep. All right, if you've got questions, call the hotline. What's that number, Julio? Six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. You know it. <laughs> All right, you're going to hear it in this break. We'll be right back, right after. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, X10, Pennsylvania. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, 
healthy plants, and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvest. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860, WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800, WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So, Julio, what is bugging you? Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, tent that. caterpillars. Yes, they are. They're tent right. caterpillars. And what did I say during the break? I said, you know, there's only a couple of things that I want to bring out about tent caterpillars. One is they are not bagworms. No. So don't go to your local garden center saying you have bagworms. Because if you have bagworms, they look like cones. If you have tent caterpillars, it's a web that has taken over a branch or it's in the crotch of a tree or... It actually looks like a gigantic spider web, but inside are all these. What we're saying, they look like crawling mustaches. <laughs> Is that what you call them? <laughs> they are. They look like crawling mustaches oh all over. And that, uh, like in the beginning, they're real right. small, and then all of a sudden they break out. You can try to spray, but look, if you can't break the web, it's right. not. It has to hit the insect. A lot of times, it's on fruit trees. The good news is. They may eat a lot, but it's not going to hurt the tree that much. You know, right. may look unsightly. Mm -hmm. That's probably it more than anything. Yeah. And I was telling you about doing the three prong. But three you take prong. a stick that like that has like three branches in it that are real rough, uh -huh. and it's the cotton candy method. <laughs> and cotton you go candy. and you you put that stick in there and right? you twirl it around and you get that web like it's cotton, cotton candy, candy yeah. and then you draw those caterpillars out and you step wow. on them. Oh, that's a great way. <laughs> it's a little messy. It is. Don't wear your good shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Julio, yeah. you've heard of cockroach killers. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's what right. you get on. And, and that's the best method, oh to be God. honest with you, especially when they're young. Uh, we've but, had her full of uh, candy today. <laughs> yeah. so, and you got to make sure you do not overspray your right. caterpillar candy. Yeah. Um, you can spray mm -hmm. if you break that uh, web. But uh, honestly, if they break out, they're looking for a place to, to metamorphize. Yeah, they, 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 and those... In fall, we see them all the time. There's those like brown moths, moth, yeah, and they I look like just a large moth. That's what that's what they are when they they grow up. And it's not every year it's bad. Some years it's worse than the others. It's kind of like locust. It's every seven years or so Eight that years, it gets yeah. really bad, like where it's everywhere. Right. Um, you can spray it with BT. You know, seven, eight. You know, I or nothing. So don't be overly concerned. You want to make sure that's not something else. And that again, if they're brown and they have some blue right. with the stripes going down the back, that's a tent caterpillar, eastern tent caterpillar. And they can be prolific. But honestly, they're they're not going to kill that anything. Kill, that's the great. It's the it it looks like they will. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. So I like that cat and cotton candy. Cotton candy one, yeah. Because <laughs> I know you probably have cockroach killers. You can do, do that, too. Yeah, can. yeah, you get them on and just squish them. That's yeah, the best way. That. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got to go to break. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-685. 1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 
and we'll see you in the garden. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers and Garn. Julio, lots uh, to learn, wow. right? My goodness. We got schooled again. Yep. I'm and, telling you, you know, the candy, you know, Caterpillar candy, you know, it's a new product. Come on over to Bloomers. We have them today. Okay? That's right. That's right. So, or chat, ask at your local garden center. Yes. Or, Caterpillar uh, candy yes. by Center to Nursery. First Great time product. I have ever seen it from anybody that has it so easily designed so that you know what you're doing. Also, those native folks out there, if you have complaints about uh, loose stripe, mm-hmm, yeah. please send them to Julio Zamora, care of yeah. Bloomers in the Garden. 609-685-1880. <laughs> I'll be yeah, here for you. That's right. <laughs> Brett, thank you. Thank Great you, job. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week right here in the garden. See you in the garden. <laughs>